Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? Hope it's fantastic and wonderful. Um, everything here is great. As you can see or maybe cannot see from the state of things here, I did not work on the Stanley number 4 last night. Had a date night with M instead, which was really nice. We went out, um, did a little bit of book shopping, and then went and had dinner. And it's something we don't do all that often anymore, uh, pre, pre situation, uh, we would go out at least once a week. Sometimes, you know, there for a while, I think maybe we even went out a couple of times a week. Um, we don't really do that anymore. Uh, for one, I love cooking and I have found some dishes that she really enjoys. So I just cook a lot more, um, because it, it's fun for me and two money and three, the situation just put us in a more of a stay-at-home kind of mood. We do go out. Um, it's just not not like we used to. It was it was a lot, and I think we both realized we were spending too much money doing that. Anyway, so we'd rather just stay home. Um, and speaking of staying home, uh, we're about to get hit by a snowstorm supposedly. Um, last night. We started to get winter storm warnings for today, saying it was going to be three to six inches. Now they're saying six to eight inches. Uh, some somewhere, some forecasts are calling for up to a foot in the mountains. Where I live, I'm technically not in the mountains, and, and it's kind of hard thing to describe to people who live who don't live in West Virginia. Our mountains aren't very mountainous. Uh, our mountains aren't like in the cloud, huge mountains, like you would think, you know, out west in Colorado and that sort of thing. Our mountains are really just big hills. Um, and so where I'm at, I'm kind of in the foothills of those, quote, mountains. Uh, and those mountains are just to the east of me. And um, some of my coworkers live in that region, and they will get a lot of snow. Uh, they'll get a lot more snow than we get. And it's only a few thousand feet elevation change. Like where I'm at right now, I think I'm at like right around 1,500 feet above sea level, something like that. Um, to the east, to the, the mountains, uh, it might get up to 4,000 feet, which is not a mountain. Like it's just a big hill, right? But it's a, that amount of, of change is enough to cause a significant snowfall and a lot of it happens because the storms moving from the west across the plains and the like the barren midwest when they hit the hills here and the and the turbulence you know from the the ground here causes those storms to stall and so instead of just blowing past us and leaving some snow they sit on the mountains for a little longer and dump more snow so it's going to be really interesting uh we haven't had a real snowstorm and i don't think we had one last year at all we had one storm where the me and Monster and were able to go outside and make snowmen, and they were tiny because there wasn't that much snow, and it melted within a couple of days. We haven't had a good snowstorm in a couple of years, I think, maybe even three or four years. So it should be interesting, uh, but now that I work from home, it doesn't really impact me that much. The fun thing about snowstorms in this area is trying to go grocery shopping. Uh, people will buy the weirdest thing. And I think we've had this talk before. It's always milk, egg, and bread. Milk, eggs, and bread. Like, if I went to the store right now, because the storm's supposed to hit at like 4 p.m. tonight, if I went to the store right now, there would be no milk, eggs, or bread. And I still don't know, like, what are you making with milk, eggs, and bread that you just have to have that? Like, I think that, personally, there's so many more useful storm foods, like high-protein, uh, you know, foods like beans uh, or like rice. Milk, eggs, and bread don't do anything. Um, I guess bread is... Uh, bread, if you have sandwich meat, because that way if the power is out, you have food that you don't need to cook, that's fine. But I don't get the point of like, I'm going to go buy three loaves of bread because the storm's coming. I've never figured that one out. Or eggs, for that matter. Um, I, I, I tend to go for canned goods when I'm stockpiling because canned goods often can be eaten uncooked. And if the power goes out, then you have to kind of deal with that. Luckily, where I live, I think that one time in... 
oh, not in, not since I've lived in this house. So I've lived here, this will be my 10th year in this house. Uh, my previous house, so it's been at least 10 years, maybe probably more like 15-ish years. We had one time where the power was out for a couple days. It very rarely happens like that. And so I don't keep a large stockpile of food and water uh, prepared for power outages. Uh, I keep a normal amount of food and water, right? Like I keep, um, which for water is zero. I have no on-hand water. I probably should. I should probably fill some jugs, do a normal rotation, because that is something that is that quickly runs out. But we just here in these little foothills, I don't we don't experience large power outage events like that. There are times to the east up in those mountains where they might lose power for days because the snow crew can't get, you know, the, the power crew can't get to wherever the lines are down. Um, that's not really the case here. So I don't stockpile. I do, however, have a camp stove and plenty of propane because I'm a camper. So if the power is out, I can cook. And so that means I don't, I don't stockpile like special foods, I should say. I don't, I don't have like, this is my emergency supply because my normal supply is about two weeks supply anyway. So I've got two weeks of food in the house right now, probably more if I really wanted to stretch it out. And I've never seen an event where we would have to be like that, you know, isolated like that. Even when I was a kid in the, in the 90s, I think 93, we had a big blizzard that came through and it dumped like feet of snow, like three feet of snow or something. And um, within probably two to three days of the snowstorm, roads were open, like we could go places. Uh, I do remember my, my cousin lived probably a 10 or 20 minute drive from here during that snowstorm i remember her and her husband and their son got on the four-wheeler and came to visit us and then went on past us to visit their their mom or her mom so i do remember that blizzard like early in that blizzard they came up just like they rode the four-wheeler through town because there was no road crews nobody was making it we haven't had snow like that since the 90s um and, and like I said, even then it was just a couple of days where you couldn't go get things. Uh, so I don't stockpile. I probably should. And I should probably have some stuff in, in my car. I currently don't have like a blanket in my car. I used to keep, I had a like fold up blanket that I think I got from Toyota or something like that. It used to stay in my old car. I should get one of those again and maybe just an emergency roadside kit. I have jumper cables and that's about it. But like, those people that got stuck in Kentucky or wherever it was overnight on a freezing highway, like that would be terrifying and terrible without some way of keeping warm of, uh, you know, especially if you're like a lot of people around here will go out in just, you know, t-shirt and jeans because they're going to be in their car. They're going to go to Walmart. What if you got stuck somewhere and you couldn't, you couldn't, uh, you know, make it through the night because you're freezing, <laughs> literally freezing and your car you know runs out of gas because you're trying to keep it warm or whatever or you can't start it uh, that would be a scary situation so I probably should do more prep but um, I don't I don't know I'm a survivalist so I will find a way uh, and I trust my skills in that regard so I don't really feel the need to scavenge and store and, and stockpile I think that's the word I was looking for. Anyway, do you keep some sort of emergency preparedness? Do you have uh, water on hand in case water goes out or anything like that? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is journeyman. It is a noun meaning a person who, although not a top master of his profession, has become extremely competent through long years of practice at a particular craft or skill. So this happens that journeyman and sexton American poet and author. Journeyman, J-O-U-R-N-E-Y-M-A-N. Is that word ever really used outside of like a union apprenticeship, like where you would become an apprentice and then a journeyman and then a master? Like, is that... In America, I don't. I feel like journeyman isn't really a thing. I think that in Europe, and in, in the UK in particular, they have like apprenticeship programs for trade skills. Like, if I wanted to be a carpenter, I would go to an apprenticeship program. 
uh, and then become a journeyman and then so on. Is that sort of thing... Are there trades that use those terminology besides like union jobs here? I'm curious. 